buy a head for maize, you can buy a head for wheat. Then you adjust it all. But you are using the same combined harvest. Okay, so we have two heads. We have one for maize and we have one for wheat. The ma we don't have one for mango. Okay? So let's move that side. Okay, come in. You are making noise, man. Season, do you grow maize and then your colleagues say summer? Now I'm asking which season do you grow wheat? Wheat. Okay, so tomorrow we are going to wheat. We are starting with the wheat planting. So right now we are preparing the lens. Who have seen how wheat looks like? Who have never seen how wheat looks like? We just tell the ones we make for bread and the ones we make for cakes. Okay? But what else? What, what other products can you do with wheat? It looks like wheat also. Oats and wheat and barley. You know barley? Yeah. What is for what do we use barley for? Huh? I know some guys they like it. Huh? Wheat. <laughs> we need to call the police. <laughs> Beer. Beer. I like this guy. <laughs> it's a type. All of these are all in the same family. Together with wheat. Okay, one thing some people didn't know. Where do we get spaghetti from? We get it from wheat. Pasta, we get it from wheat. But there are two types of wheat. This is called soft wheat. Soft wheat produces a flour that is very soft. When you, when, you, when you bake it, it produces soft products like cake and bread. You have another wheat called durum wheat, which is hard wheat. It produces a flour that is hard, and that's what makes sp spaghetti pasta. In Namibia, we don't grow the hard wheat. We only grow the soft wheat, okay? Because the hard wheat, it, it requires low temperatures, like minus one, minus two, sometimes two degrees. Just long periods of cold temperatures, okay? So now, this warehouse, some of you are wondering, what do we do? This is a sorting warehouse. We pack things, and you can see there are two machines. These are the last things we'll see here before we go to the field. This sorting warehouse is also important. It's one of the requirements of a good farm. You need to have a place where you store and, 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 and sort your produce, right, after coming from the field. So Skondor has won the best <coughs> farm that produce vegetables, such as onions and potatoes. In Kavango East, there's no one, when it comes to potatoes, no one beats us. We know how to grow potatoes, okay? So that's why we have invested in this machine. There are two, these are sorting machines, potato sorting machines, there are two of them. When we harvest potatoes, imagine this whole place. You see those bags there? Yeah. That bag is one ton. It can carry one ton of, of potatoes. Okay? We, we can have maybe 500 of them back here when we are harvesting. So the tractors are just coming in and out, in and out. This thing is a funnel. We, do, we put it here so that it's easier to pour it inside. Okay? for them to drop here. This is a control panel, this is orange box. It controls both machines. So at this, mach at this control panel, you switch it on, you can control the speed of the movement of this machine, which will, ma which will make sense now. So once, imagine now, we have 500 bags like that, right? So we have this panel here, and then we have a forklift. You guys know a forklift? Yes. It lifts up these bags, then we pour it, we pour it in here, and the machine is moving. These things are moving in direction. So I want you guys to move slowly like this. Some move like this, some move like this. As I explain, in the different processes. Okay? You just Don't move. move too close. Don't move too fast. Just listen. So this thing, these are raw. Sorry. They throw Sorry. The, 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 the so now we remove the dust. We've washed it. And as they are coming here, this, this is airflow. You can read here. This fence that are blowing, 
and then they come here. Come to church. All the sisters and all of you want to see. Okay? So then the potatoes are rolling. They are rolling out from here. Let's go and turn like this. Okay? So the potatoes are rolling, a lot of them they are rolling here. Now, the first place, when they come here, this is just a block for them to not to move too fast. Okay? So we stop us just to make sure that they are also moving at a, at a, at a, at a giving chance for people to sort them. So people, when I come here, I, I, I sort the employees just the way you are standing. Say so some, some of them stay like this, until then, some like this. So I tell them, the first thing, you, you have to choose the rotten ones. You, you choose the big one, the large one. You, you choose the medium one, also on this side. The rotten ones, the large one, the medium one, and then the, uh, the, the, what? the, the rotten one also on the other side. And so all they are doing, they are just sorting. Why is sorting very important? Let me ask you that. Why is sorting important? Why, when you, pro when you harvest your produce from the field, before you sell them, you have to sort them? What's, what's why it's important? Very good. The first thing that you sort, and this is a, an advice even when you have your small garden. When you harvest, the first thing you do when you bring your things from your garden, you have to separate the bad ones from the good ones. Why? One rotten apple can spoil the rest. The same way when one person in this, if you misbehave, you can spoil the whole name of the school. Right? So you don't want that. The first thing you do, you, you take out the bad ones. Now, once you have taken out the bad one, that's the first sorting process. The second, second, second sorting process is what? What do you guys think? Huh? Some are big, some are, some are small. big and some are small. So that's the second sorting process. This is a general rule in agriculture. The second process is size. After you have taken the good ones, now you take out the sizes, you check the sizes. Why is size important? Different prices. Different prices, excellent. So, the sorting starts here, of sizes, okay? So, if you can see this thing, what will happen to the small, small ones? What will happen to them when they come here? They drop. So, that's, that plot is the sorting for small, baby potatoes. Whoever has made nice, delicious soup with baby potatoes? I love baby potatoes. They are so nice and they melt in the pot. Mm, very delicious. <laughs> okay, so... Then the big ones and the medium come here. Like I mentioned now, because that machine, that control panel, it, it is, you can control the speed. Sometimes it can be too fast. Then the workers here, they do, they make the sorting holes. They can put the large one, they mix the, the sizes. Or they mix even the bad ones. So the speed needs to be very, at a very optimum, so that the workers are, are not packing too slow, but at the same time, they're also doing the job play. So ideally you want, in one hour, okay, you want to pack around 400 bags in one hour. 400 bags like this. If you are doing less than that, there's a problem. It's either the, the workers are not sorting fast, or the machine is too slow, or there's a blockage coming. You understand? And the more the demand, the more the bags per hour. So sometimes there are trucks that come back here. They are waiting. They are coming from Angola, they are coming from Shakati, they are coming from Hindu. So you have to pack it. There's no time to waste. If you don't pack, you don't give them, they, are, they drive, they go to someone else. So that is why this is important. So sorting requires people with experience who are used to the job. They do it fast. And then as the things are flowing here, then the bags are put here. The bags are put in here. So then... Okay? like this, so then they fall. Potatoes are falling here. Then there's a guy, a strong guy, who's packing, who's packing them and packing them on pellets. You know pellets? Those wooden things. Now, another agricultural, another um, mathematic equation or solution. Listen to me carefully, I want you to write it down. Okay? One hectare. How many is one hectare? Who knows how many is one hectare? Mm -hmm. These are basic stuff that 11s and 12s have to know. You have to know, if I say I have a farm of one hectare, you have to know, you have to imagine how big it is. If you don't, then you are lost. Okay? 
you have to be able to, to size up land. Okay, so one hectare is how many square meters? 100 by 100, which is equal to what? 10,000 square meters. So one hectare is 10,000 square meters. One hectare is equal to a football field. Exactly. The standard football field is, is hun it's one hectare. Now, this farm, okay, listen, this farm is 800 hectares. Okay? That's why I ask you that question, so that you understand also how big Skondo is. So that is 800 football fields. Can you imagine that? Some farms is 1,000 hectares. Like Donga, they've even extended the second phase. It's now 2,000 hectares. Okay? So now, let's come back to the solution. Now, in one hectare, you can harvest, listen, you can harvest 50 ton. So make one hectare is equal to 50 ton. Okay? 50 ton of potatoes. That's if you did very well. I already explained to you one ton. How one ton is how many kg? 1,000 kg. So we understand. When I say, in, now we understand, right? We can imagine it. So one hectare, you can have as, you can have as 50 ton of potatoes. 50 ton, okay. Now, as we planted six hectares, six hectares, so how much yield are we expecting? Let's say eight hectares, it was eight hectares. How many, how many ton were we expecting last year? We planted. We have an answer? 400, okay? Now, in 400, 10%, huh? in farming, 10% is always called normal loss. It's what you expect that you lose. It will, it's from the spoilage, from the rotting, from pests. Okay, that is 10%. So, as a manager, when I do my calculation, I automatically take out, a good manager will already take out 10%. You can see that loss. Loss can be pests, rotting under the ground, can be even theft, people still. So, if your loss increases from 10% to 20 to 30, you are a bad manager. You are not in control, you are not managing. You understand? So now, what is 10% of 400? Teachers, please. 360, very good. So that is the actual, what, that's what we call the actual yield, the actual harvest, okay? Now, for 360 times, how do you convert it to kg so that we know how many kgs we have? It times, it times it with what? 1,000. With 1,000. So it's how much? 360,000. It's 300 and? <laughs> yeah, it's right, 360,000. Now, very good. So imagine we are expecting in this warehouse 360,000 kg, right? So now we pack them in 10 kg. Let me make it easy for you. The bag, because perpetrators are, are, are packed in two types of sizes. Which ones and which one? Seven kg and? Okay. and 10 kg. So let's make it 10 kg. We are expecting 360,000 potatoes. They are coming here and we are going to pack them in 10 kg. How many bags are you going to have? Very good. She's going to get a gift. 36,000 bags of 10 kg. Can you imagine that? Packed here and packed there on pellets. Now, what do you, one bag, we're almost done. One bag cost 50 Namibian dollars. How much money are you going to make? Very good. 1.8 million. That's only 8 hectares. Okay, now, we're not done yet. 1.8 million. Is that a lot of money? Yes. Huh? Yes. It's less. So you have that money, that kind of money. Just just eight hectares. Just that for Rundu. If I want to supply Rundu, right? Okay. So 1.8, you have to minus 300,000. Okay? You have to take out 300,000. 300,000 is your cost for your labor. Your diesel, when you're plowing, your electricity, everything. Huh? 1.5 million. So last year we made about 1.5 million. Just from potatoes. Now imagine some of you have the potential even to be farmers. You take your parents' land, you get a loan, you, you build up a warehouse, you buy a tractor, you work hard. That's why you see when you drive to Fort Fontaine, you have a lot of farmers. They, they retire very early and then they farm. 
And the reason why I'm explaining that is because many, many, many black people, we don't understand the, the importance of farming. We, under, we actually think it's for the poor people. Do you know why we have a land issue in Namibia? Huh? No. <laughs> do, we, do you know? No. It's because of farm. Because white people who colonize our country have all the good soils. And we don't still understand. You understand? So it's our duty as Namibians to understand these things. Because if we don't understand it and we give our land away, then how are we going to produce food for ourselves? You understand? Yes. So that's why it's very important. So some of you are old enough. You will hear, you will see your parents are getting old. Make sure that you register yourself, the Ministry of Land. Make sure that those lands are not lost. And don't make the land to stand idle when you are, when you are educated. You can produce. You can learn. You can get a bachelor degree. You study and, and, and you produce. I'm going to talk about scholarship at the end. There are scholarships available for Namibians. Okay, I'm going to talk more about that and I'm going to also end with some career also. We already talked about mechanic engineering and IT technicians, right? So I'm going to talk about other ones also that has to do with production that you can go into. Are there any questions with the production of No, this bag should not manufacture. In fact, it's, it's, a, it's said until now, we import even potato bags. Can you? There's, there's one. What do we call this? Hay. Hay, huh? We call them hay, or we can also call them bales. Yeah, there are two types of bales. There are square bales like this, and then we have round one. Which one did you see? Round one. Bungo bungo, there should be round one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there are different. What is the machine that makes hay? Huh? What is the name? You know what is the name? It's the baling machine. Baling machine. Huh? You heard it? It's called what? Baling machine. Baling machine. So it, it bales. So there are also two types of machines, just like I explained. There's one that makes a round, I think, uh, I don't know where that one is packed, I think it's packed there. Kacha, if you, manage your, if you manage your farm very well, you won't have any waste. In fact, you'll have extra money from, 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 from things that are considered waste, that you don't pay for. Like this is just grass, but you are making money from it. Okay? This grass goes for maybe $60, inclusive vet. We have maybe here 700 to 800. They are going to Vamle. Okay? So, that's the beauty of agriculture. It's not an industry that wastes. It can make you money left and right. So, bales are for what? For what animal? For cows. Did, did, did we have good rain, rainy season this year? No. It's good that you know. Okay? The rainy season was not very good, meaning that the grass is going to finish. In fact, in some places it's already finished. It will finish maybe, but completely by June, middle of June to July. Then it's finished. So from June, when is the next rain drop? When is it going to drop again? November, if you are lucky. So now, the duration between July and November, when there's no grass, A lot of a lot of death, a lot of losses in cows. Okay? So that's why a project like us, we have a, a social responsibility. Although we don't farm with grass, we have a social responsibility. It's our responsibility to help farmers. So we do this just to help. Not to say that because we, are, we, we grow we grow grass here. We don't grow grass here. There are farms that grow grass, like hard up irrigation project. They grow lucerne, which is a type of feed, they also make it like this. You have heard of lucerne? Yes. Yeah, lucerne is a type of feed with a lot of protein, concentrated protein. So in drought, if you feed your kettles with lucerne, you don't, it doesn't lose weight because it builds the muscle. So this one is a dry feed. It doesn't give weight, but it just sustains your, your kettle through the drought. It's this and, and the, maize, the maize stalks, when you harvest the maize stalks. So if you want to, to give this to your kettle, you also can mix it. You go to Agra, 
you ask for other feeds, mix it. Okay? Any questions? Okay, great. So, you saw that machine that was standing here, that one that is going there. It's going in the field now, so I will not stop it. It is uh, called a mechanical rake. Okay? What do you use, what do you think you use the mechanical rake for? Huh? What what is a rake? What do you use a rake for? For what? For raking, right? Gathering. It's for gathering. You, you gather grass, you gather whatever waste when you are cleaning and also when you are preparing land. Are you listening? So that mechanical rake, when you are bathing. Oh. It comes, it makes, it then makes, gathers the grass that you've cut in rows. So that now the last process, what is the last machine that has to come? The bailing machine. So that the bailing machine comes. So they, they walk like this, they follow each other. So the first one cuts, he goes and finishes the line, the second one rakes. And that's the reason why this guy is raking. Who is behind him? Who will follow him very soon? The bailing machine. Who is finished with work? The slasher. So when he's finished, if the others are behind, because maybe they were bailing this side, the other can, can they can go home if they are done, if there's no other work. If we have assigned them for that. So those ones they pack, the bailing machine is also packed now because there's no time. So we will go to the bailing machine. So you understand? So these are the three process. You cut first, then you rake together it, and then the bailing machine. It gathers and compact. This compaction, it happens in the bailing machine. Okay? So when you harvest it first, the cages can range from 58 to 40. And as the grass is drying, because if it's staying in the sun, what's happening to the grass? What is happening? It's losing what? It's losing moisture. So as it's losing moisture, then it becomes lighter and lighter and lighter. Okay? So let's move that side. This is the bale machine. If you come here, you'll see that these are pullers. What they do is they rotate like this. They pull the grass in. And then this thing here, it moves to move the things here for compaction, the grass for compaction. So it compact, 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 compact. And then as it's compacting, it's moving. The compacted place is going on that other outlet there. You see it there where the grass is. And then they say, they say adjustments that you can make here of the length where the weight weight has to be cut by a, a knife inside of the, the the required length that you want the bell to be you understand okay so this is a bell can go for 350,000 so as the compaction is taking place there's also another thing that's taking place hello so the second thing that is taking place it's the roping so there's a needle also that ropes, that ties the ropes. So you put the ropes inside here. There's a place for ropes. So it compacts, it ties, and it cuts. The cutting point is here already. You can see the mark, and then it drops it. So the tractor come, load it, and bring it to the to the field. Those are coming from, I'm sure, from Vungu probably. Okay. So this is a lot of money. A lot of money, especially in a drought season, is free money. We consider this free money. One truck like that can cost 40,000. Just to, a client can cost, including transport. And you guys have grass probably. Some people have grass at their, at their villages. And Why, how did you study? What is a greenhouse? You say what? I had the answer this side. Can you speak loud? Temperature control environment. Okay. Who else has a different answer? A greenhouse. 
who can add to what your colleague said. It's incomplete answers. Explain yourself a bit. What is a greenhouse? Mm. What is a greenhouse? You guys studied greenhouses? Oh, I'm accusing that you guys studied. You studied, huh? Yes. Okay, what, what else? Who can add something? Okay. So, greenhouses, they are meant, like you say, to control the temperature, number one, the humidity, okay? Which is the, amount, the percentage of moisture in the air. That's humidity. Okay? So, temperatures and, moisture and, and humidity. Now, because temperatures, you cannot control it unless if you have air condition, right? Yes. So, you need to have air condition. Greenhouses are differently designed than this. What is the material for greenhouses? What do they use? If you imagine inside, how will it feel? Is it, will it be cool or hot? With, it will be cool if you have temperatures, I mean uh, air conditions, but it will be hot because you have plastic. So it's just sun coming in and, and the sun rays is trapped under the, so the heat is increasing, right? So what season are you elongating? What season will you be elongating in a greenhouse? Huh? It's summer. So greenhouses are, are used for tropical vegetables like tomatoes, a lot of summer crops. You, so you, you can plant them in, in winter, okay? In, inside the greenhouse and it will be still warm. You understand? Okay, so it's basically to manipulate seasons. Now, if you have, if you have, if it's in, if, if it's in summer, what will you, what will you do? You switch off the aircon, you'll switch on the aircon, you drop the, the temperatures of the aircon, to cool the, the control place. So that's how you manipulate it. Now you have winter, and while people are, are waiting for winter to grow certain crops, you are, you are already started. It's very expensive. Now, the reason why we don't have greenhouses in the north here, because this is already a subtropical area. You hardly have long winters here, right? In winter, Winter is basically in the morning and in the evening. In the day, it's very hot, right? So if you put a greenhouse here, it's going to be hot nevertheless. Temperatures goes up to 40 degrees. So it's very, very hot, like in the Kavango region, even in the south. So you cannot have greenhouses. You need now another alternative, and this is the alternative, net shade. Net shade, you use net, so the hot air can still go out, right? So you, and, but it also provides shade to the crop. So it's like a balance. You understand? It's a bit cheaper also. You don't need to have air conditions. You don't have need all these things. Okay? So all you need is basically a, an irrigation system. And for temperatures that goes high here, in, in, like in this region, like I mentioned, it goes to 38 to 40 degrees. You need also these topical sprinklers. Who have been to Mashari Lodge before? Mashari. Who has been there? You haven't, you haven't been there? Okay, there's a Eto Mashari Lodge. You know where it is, right? It's just in the center there. At the eating area, there's a there's sprinklers that make mist. It's just to cool. It just makes like compressed air. You, you feel like you feel like just the moisture. It's just to cool you. So this is basically the same. It's like this is a compressor and it compresses. It has a small outlet here for water. So it compresses and then when it comes out, it looks something like that. When when a pipe is burst. Just thin spray. You get, you guys get what I'm trying to explain. Yes. So basically, these things they just cool also the temperature. It's also just there to cool. It's not for irrigation. This one. So in that blue building, we have a computer. You can switch them on automatic, and it regulates the temperatures. So if, for example, the temperatures reach goes up, maybe from 30 degrees to 35, then that's too much, especially for tomatoes. It's too much. Then these things come on automatic. It has sensors. Just press for 30 minutes until the temperature is cool, and then it switch off itself. Okay. What are the different types of irrigation system we use? Drip irrigation, uh huh. Sprinkler, uh. 
Huh? Fear of irrigation. Okay. Which one do you observe that we have here? In drip irrigation. What is the benefit of drip irrigation? Excellent. So, as you can see, ours is a bit different. You have also different uh, extensions, small pipelets. Then you press, then to just to pin it next to the plant. It's for exact, for exact um, optimum water provision. Okay? So these things, each one of them can give two liters per hour. Two liters per hour. If you take a, a Coke bottle of two liters, you can put this in there. And then you time it, you, you take your time, you make a stopper, you go and walk around and you come back after two hours. Because different amount of water, so you need to understand, cabbage, how much water do they need at this stage? At this stage, as they are growing, how much water do they need? You don't just open the tap and leave. You have to know the different water requirements for different crops. Like at this age, they need almost 45 minutes only. So these guys, I have to make sure, and I have to supervise them to make sure they give it only 45 minutes. Because their roots are not developed, well developed. You understand? Because the root that absorb the water. Okay, so in the net shade, what in the net shade, what kind of crops can you grow here? Huh? Spinach, yes. Green peppers, yes. Huh? Not carrots. Uh huh. All the crops that grow underground, you don't have to grow them here. Beetroots, sweet potatoes, you don't even potatoes, you don't have to grow them in the net shade. This is just for crops with with whatever harvesting or edible thing is outside, like tomatoes. But this net shade, they are especially for tomatoes. We are one of the biggest producers of tomatoes. Unfortunately, this year we have a pest that comes from Congo. It's called Tuta absoluta. It's a fly, a small fly. It lays eggs on the eggs and then it eats up. It creates like small worms. This eggs, it creates small worms that go into the stem and into the leaves and it destroys the whole thing. When you come here, it's just yellow. You can spray chemicals. So until now, we are doing a research to find the right chemical to destroy. So we cannot plant any tomatoes now at this point. That's why we planted cabbage. Okay? So we used to be the biggest supplier. We supply Rundu, even some fishing companies. You know fishing companies, they make this canned fish, right? Mm -hmm. And they need tomatoes, right? Tomato sauce, so we also supply them. Okay, so here we grow tomatoes mainly and, and green peppers. Now, what do you think this is for? These things. Huh? Yes, what do, what do we call it? What do you call that process? It's good, you are right. What do you call that process? It's training. We call it training, training the, the plant. So training, you, you see it even in the local gardens. They put sticks to have the tomatoes, to lift up the, the tomatoes and also to tie the fruit so that they don't touch the ground because they will rot, right? Mm -hmm. So this is for training. You see why these poles are broken? You see some of the poles are broken? Mm -hmm. I got a variety, tomato variety. It comes from, from, from Israel. It produced maybe 40 ton per hectare so the fruits are this big and every plant give 180 kg it was so heavy it started to break the poles <laughs> because of the fan because they were doing this okay so it's just said that you guys could not see it okay so i'm going to explain to you so these are tray cells they are plants that you grow the the plant the seed is too small Huh? Which crops, vegetable crops, have small seeds? Tomatoes. Tomatoes. What else? Onions. Onions. Cabbage. Cabbage. So all these things that are small, you cannot plant them directly into the ground. Because when they start to germinate, sometimes the soil, when you irrigate, the soil becomes compact. And it's too hard for that little tender plantlet to push the soil. You understand? That's why in our homes, when you plant tomatoes directly into the ground, I know some of you have tried. It doesn't germinate, right? Mm -hmm. Because the soil is too hard. It's too heavy for it to push. So it dies. So now, what scientists have done is to make that process, the germination process, easier. So you plant them here, but you don't put, you don't put sand, normal sand. 
there is different types of materials. You can, some use rice, Chinese use rice, like spoiled rice. Some they use wooden, you know this wood from wood carvings, the things that fill. So whatever the thing you use, it must be free of chemicals and it must be, it must be able to absorb water for the seed. So like rice absorb water, uh, those wooden things also absorb water. So it must be pulpy, right? Very soft and pulpy. So you fill it up here, you put your seeds, like cabbage it takes like five days and then they germinate. So after germination, it takes three weeks before you transplant. So like this one, they, you see those cabbages there? They are three weeks now. They are ready to transplant. Okay? So cabbage, tomatoes, green peppers, you need a eh? treasure. They are very cheap. It's maybe $30 for the dog. Very, very cheap. Okay. Are there any questions? What type of tool? Yeah. Good question. So this is also a, this is a type of tool, it's tracer. Okay, you need also watering cans to water the plants. You need you need hose because now, as you can see, the, the weeds are starting to come. So they will, the ladies will need to come and, 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 and clean up the fields. What else? You guys know a knapsack? Who know? Who doesn't know what the knapsack is? Naksak sprayer is a sprayer that you put on your back. Then you spray for chemicals. It's a knapsack sprayer. There's a knapsack sprayer for small areas like this. There's a boom sprayer that you pull on the tractor for large areas, for large hectares. So you cannot take a knapsack and go and, and spray chemicals in 20 hectares. It will take you the whole, the whole month. So you have, to t you have to take the boom sprayer. The boom sprayer is a machine. It has like sprayers that, that, that extend from maybe 20 meters, 10 meters to, 20, to 15 meters or 20 meters, depending on the size that you have, and then they cover the whole area. You spray the chemicals. Mm -hmm. So you need the knapsack sprayer also here. It's very important. Okay? What else? I think that's it in terms of tools. Plants are like babies. You have to take care of them every day. You have to make sure they have water. You have to go through the lines. It's called scouting. Scouting is when you walk around the, the, the lines to look for pests, to look for anything that is wrong with the plant. You have to do it every morning because a lot can happen over the night. So every morning a farm, a good farm manager knows everything in his farm before the workers even go to the field. You need to know what happened so that you can instruct them. When you go see them, you say, okay, you, you must go spray here. You, you must go to the other field there, the maize, there are some worms. So a manager, you need to be on top of everything. You need to manage a farm. You need to be in charge of the farm. And so if you guys have your own garden, it's the same, because you are the manager then, right? So you have to manage, you have to take care of your crop. If you take care of them, they will take care of you at harvest. Okay? How much does one cabbage cost? Ten dollar, right? Now, in one hectare, you can plant 15,000 cabbages, okay, in one hectare. Again, the principle of normal loss applies. 10%, you take out your 10%, you can get how much money you make from cabbage. So this whole place, this is not even one hectare. This is, this is half a hectare. This is 0 0.5 hectares, it's not one hectare. So in 0 0.5 hectares, you are looking at around 7,000 plants, 7,000 heads. You understand? 10% 10 of 7,000? How much? 10% of 7,000. You guys are tired or what? Oh, you are just hungry? Okay. 7,000 7, is 700 only. Okay? So. I expect maybe 700, maybe someone will steal something, some will be spoiled, but it cannot be beyond 700. If I count more than 700, it's a, it's a loss for me, because it's more than the normal loss. Now the last thing I want to share is about careers, okay, about careers. Those who are in grade 12, who are thinking about going in agriculture, this is when you listen. So there are a lot of career opportunities. The first career that you can even study in, in you now, 
is agronomist. Who knows what is an agronomist? Huh? You know what is an agronomist? Okay, an agronomist is a scientist. First, you have to know that all pe all all people who all careers in agriculture they are scientific uh, careers. So in general, everyone who studies who gets a BSc, a bachelor degree in science. I am Isha, and I'm the I'm not the manager of the cash crops part of the of Mashar Irrigation, but for, I'm the operational manager for the blueberries, which we will plant later this year. But um, I'm just going to explain um, how it works here currently, and then um, you will visit me later this year or next year for the blueberries. Okay, but come stand a little bit closer. Are you? Are you? Oh. <laughs> Under irrigation. It's these pivots you can see here. These ones, uh, not not these ones. Those ones, and these ones, and these ones in the middle. We split them into commercial farming unit one, commercial farming unit two, and medium scale farming unit in the middle. And I will show you at the um, pump station. I will show you the different sites where the water is is going to to the bottom, the top, and the middle part. Okay, so, but currently we plant, we planted corn last year in December. Maize. Maize, maize, um, on, on all of them. And then we planted, we finished planting on Sunday um, wheat, on, only on some of the pivots. We will show you where it's germinating and where the seedlings are coming up now, yeah. And then these three pivots we will go and show you it's those ones there. Um, we planted 30 hectares of potatoes. We'll only, uh, also go and show you how. Yeah. Water in here. Yeah. It goes fast, 10 kgs an hour. It makes six, 60 to 90 hectares one day. Akahana. You know Akahana? When the maize is tall. In the water. 10 hectares. 10 hectares is one thing. But we can do also if you put more water, uh, um, you want more water on the seeds, it gives now 200 liters per hectare. per hectare. Lot of it costs a lot of money. Huh? That's why we give water every day. To, we expect five tons yield. But maize is ten tons per hectare. The thirty hectare, hundred and fifty tons wheat for bread. We can give yeah, old kavango 
One, one breath. But we will need two breaths. No. <laughs> you see that one? That red thing here. Behind the tractor. We harvest, we harvest that with the wheat with that one. It cuts. It takes on like the pick of water. Nice week. Just take the fox. So we go inside there, we forgot there something. So that, let, that long over there, we load the trucks. Uh, the wheat all, maize all. Okay, so from here, those, you see this image you, CFU 2 and CFU 1. So these banks control which water goes to which side of the pond. So here, I have a touch screen. And I, I go to the river pump station. It's a station below. That one is pumping the water to this station. And from this station, these pumps inside here, is pumping the water that way, this way, and that way to the potatoes. So now here, yeah, I'm seeing the river pumps is operating. Two pumps are operating. And the one pump, I'm resetting it because it has a voltage drop. Yeah. Don't touch, okay. don't touch anything. Please. Now, here's the pumps from for the potatoes. These ones are going to the potatoes. These ones are going that side and these pumps, we are not using them now, but they are going that side. So now, please follow me this side, but don't touch anything. And in the dark uh, area yes, yes. Eh? Yes. yeah that is the, the 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 soil that is full of uh, of nutrients so most 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 roots survives in the dark uh, layer right because of humans because of nutrients and all that. but you can you can clearly see that uh, the soil is is, is divided right yes. the top is black and then it followed by another layer if you check properly that you see from the second layer there is another layer. As you go deeper, you see these layers are. I mean, the, the soil is is, is 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 different. Okay. So as if erosion takes place, that dark layer goes off, and then plant roots cannot survive in the other layers. That is the danger of erosion. Okay. But this is actually the the the, the physical thing on the soil profile that we are always talking about. That layer on top, you see, followed by another layer. Physically, you can see these layers are different from each other. Okay? Yeah. I think we can go back. Mashare yeah. Farm. Yes. Uh, let me take this opportunity to 
welcome you, uh, the future farmers, uh, to this center, to the different sections. Uh, we will start with the agronomy section. Uh, Ms. Kondo will introduce you to that section. And then uh, we'll go to the non ruminant section where Mr. Shiweda will be waiting for you. Then we'll come here to the, uh, the technical section, uh, the, the workshop section, where Mr. Kefas, throughout the whole journey, then we'll go to MITC, another section of the farm. Mashari is divided into, into two, two sections. There's MADI, Mashari Agricultural Development Institute, and MITC, another section, another area of the farm. Uh, throughout the whole, the whole program, we will be guided by the farm foreman, Mr. Ichaha, uh, who is the farm foreman here, and Mr. Uh, Lignando, who is the farm foreman on the other side of MITC. Uh, feel free to ask questions, feel free to learn. This institute is for you guys, it's for all Namibians, it's for everyone. We are all here to learn. Don't be afraid and take something from here, back home, and back to the other learners at school. Uh, me being the farm manager here, there is someone on top of me who is the center head, uh, Mr. Lucas Mandema. He is not here with us because we are having something, another program here at the farm. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, welcome here. Welcome, colleagues. Thank you. I'm the agricultural scientific officer here, in charge of the agronomy section. Uh, our agronomy section consists of um, agronomy and the horticulture. Unfortunately, we cannot go to the horticulture section. It's a bit far, that side. But if we get the key in the course of the day, we'll make a turn there, then you'll see. But I promise you that there's nothing right now. You came at the wrong time. We harvested almost everything, but you'll be able to see Mahango and the Kaupi at MITC, as we are told that we have another section there. So our agronomy section is uh, about, uh, let's say, 30 plus hectares. And then we assign the 12 hectares for per millet, Mahango. So this year we planted uh, Pashana number two, but you can, as you can see, we already have it, and uh, we are storing them in that warehouse for drying before threshing. So it was a good harvest, unfortunately. I, I think you have a better sight than me. You can see there's still a bit, uh, a bit of uh, stalks in the field. Yeah, so, so it was a good harvest despite the climate or the weather conditions of uh, this year. We tried at least to plant at the right time. We harvested, I think, last month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this area you are seeing here, we, this area and that one, which is a four hectare, this one, we planted cowpea. All those years we don't used to plant anything on this area, which is a four hectare. We put cowpea. Cowpea is what? Beans, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we put cowpea. It also did not do that bad, maybe because of the timing. We thought the soil was poor, but it uh, proved to be otherwise. Uh, as you all know, cowpea doesn't require a lot of nutrients. 
so it was not a bad harvest either. We also harvested it. It's now at the workshop in the storeroom. And then the horticulture I spoke about on the other side, it's where we plant our vegetables. But uh, right now we have a project which is um, Crave. It's dealing with uh, climate change. So we assign that area for the project and we normally use sprinklers for irrigation. So they're saying no, as a project uh, that deals with climate change, you don't have to use sprinklers. So they want to install drips. You all spoke about, or you were taught about drip, sprinklers, types of different irrigations, isn't it? Yes. Even great tents. Yes. Okay, so we all know the difference between sprinklers, the advantages and disadvantages. So them, they are choosing drip over sprinklers. So now, the reason why we did not plant anything is because they want to remove the sprinklers and put the drip. Okay, so we're still waiting for them to install the drips. Then we can continue with the production of vegetables. That area is about um, six hectares. Mm. Yeah. So the other he remaining hectares, so we have 12 plus 4 plus 6, that's 24 hectares. Mm. Is it 24? Mm. 22 hectares. See, you are smart. Others are like, yes, 6 plus 4 plus 12, 24. Okay, don't worry, I'm also a trainer, so I'm just challenging you. That's what I always do in class. So it's 22 hectares under production. The rest is still reserved for other purposes. But currently we are only utilizing the 22 hectares. Any question? France. Oh, you are the France. Okay. You are only using 22 hectares. Yeah, for production. <laughs> yeah, how many hectares? Which one? Farm having... The farm yes. itself. Yes. The whole farm. Yes. It's about 4,000 hectares. But you are only using 22. For crops. Because we have animals also. We have cattle, we have donkeys, we have horses, and you know they require a lot of camps. So, including, you're asking for the farm including camps, you see, houses. Yes, the 4,000 is now the whole farm, not the field for production. What about the field, the whole field? The whole field. The whole field. The whole field. It's almost 30 because some areas, as we, you can see that side, we are extending still. So I think your interest should be on production area only. Forget about the 4,000. Forget about the undebushed area. <laughs> yes. Um, to, to use. We have occasion number two, Kangara. Those are the main two that we normally. Yeah. Okashana number two. Okashana number one, we don't plant it anymore because of the stock is very poor. The quality of the stock is very poor. Mm -hmm. So when it puts the head, it becomes heavy for the stock and then it falls over. So we mainly focus on Kangara and Okashana number two, families. Do you in any way produce your own cultivars here? No, we don't do research on families here. We are multiplying only. We get the seeds from Mahinene Research Station. We are into training and production, training and production, but research is another directorate or division. So you get all from Mahinene? Yes, we get the seeds, we multiply them here. It's a mashar. It do not do well. So we do not plant maize this year. It's only mahango or permillet. How do you prefer to grow Kangara or Kashana? Or uh, how long do they last for it to mature? Or like, I mean, to get ready for harvest? It's uh, three months. Only three months? Yeah. For them to mature. They are improved seeds. So That's they are fine. improved for shorter maturity. So it's only three months. If you plant in January, March, April, there, <laughs> you'll be able to, at least they are drying. 
and then they'll be ready to harvest. Like us, we harvested in May already. So we planted in the middle of January. It's about um, two weeks to three weeks we can start harvesting because they start uh, flowering and fruiting and then from there it's ongoing as long as the condition is favorable. They don't all fruit at the same time and then you harvest at the same time, kaupi. You harvest it today, you still come back next week. So in two, two to three weeks you'll be eating already beans. This is uh, Mr. Siweza, so you can also having a small voice like me, so but you have to listen very carefully and ask questions. Thank you. How are you? Sometimes I talk slow, sometimes I talk fast. Now. If you can't hear me, put your hands up. And as I said, I'm Andrek Siweza. I'm a technician here, mostly for livestock. I will go through you just a bit on what's happening here. And I believe more on the asked questions than on just talking. What you need to learn, what I need mostly from you is to ask questions. For me, just talking in general, it might not be useful for now. This is our livestock section. Here we have chicken and then we have pigs. The pigs are local breeds, indigenous breeds. And then the chicken we have two breeds so far. The white one, you see the white one are hardline breed. And the black and white one are cuckoo. Ah cuckoo is K-O-E, K-O-E. And they are not local, they are not, most of chicken breed are from outside. They are not Namibian breed, mostly from South Africa. What we do with the chicken, they lay eggs. You see they are mixed with male and female, made for fertilization. Lay eggs, we put eggs in a incubator and we sell chicks to communal farmers, to schools that are interested in coming up with projects, most reported projects, at a very low price of $7 per chick. If your school is interested in coming up with chicken projects, they could contact us and we should do arrangement on how can we have them. Uh, for the chicks, for the chicks or for the egg to hatch into a chick, it takes 21 days. It's a normal process, just like at our homes, at our village, where we have chicken, they sit on, the, on their own. That one is called natural hatching. But in our case, we don't do natural, we do artificial hatching, where we use the incubator. Later, we'll visit the incubator room and we explain how the process of incubating or how does the incubator work. Side. As I said, we have local or indigenous pigs that we try to conserve the local breeds so that they won't they will be existing for the future generation. That's one of the reasons. Otherwise, in the past there used to be schemes whereby communal farmers they get to Pigs, a male and a female, they go produce their own. They bring them, they, when they produce, they bring the small one back to us so that we have the next farmer. But at the moment, the process is, is stopped. But that's actually what's really happening on the production of pigare and pigs. Apart from chicken and pigs, we also have animals like goats have caters and donkeys that we have in the farms. I think Master Ruben will explain more on the donkeys on the cattle and, and goats later. But what we need to know when it's to come to chicken farming is they taking care of them, their hygiene, how to prevent diseases. 
We experience diseases here and there, although it's not a life-threatening, because of the measures that are there. Mostly, when it comes to poultry farming, one thing to consider is the hygiene, the cleanliness or the neatness of the chicken house. How you keep your chicken house. The more you keep it clean, the more you're keeping your chicken or your poultry far from diseases. But if you keep it to be dirty, just like us human beings, if you are right to be dirty, you will end up sick. But if you are always clean, diseases will be afraid to come to you. It's the same. Although, although we have various diseases, but we don't uh, experiment them so far here, the only thing might be you see is Corvazo, which is come during rainy season when it's a bit moisture and wet. But due to our Namibian environment, which is dry, it makes us a bit, a, it gives us a favorable condition that disease will not be much experienced. That was just in short. As I said, I... Just want to ask a question. Why do you choose farming with a poultry chicken? Why do you choose farming with poultry chicken? You know, comparing to all other livestock or animals, poultry or in this case chicken are the easiest animals to keep. One thing, you don't need large area. You can put them in a small area behind the house or call it back, backyard farming. They grow fast. Within three to six months, you can able to sell. Or even one day, you can able to sell a chicken. You can able to sell means to make money, make cash quickly. The other thing, it's also easy to keep. To keep, to farm with. It, 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 it bring you income in a shorter time while spending less. You don't need to spend more money comparing when we are spending on things like cattle. Within six months you can spend a thousand dollars and you can, depending on the number of chicken or poultry we have, then you can able to, to generate something. When it comes to Kara, it's a different breed. You must have to differentiate different breeds, not to, you don't want to have money when you want to take. You don't have to have the same because when people are coming to buy, somebody needs only the black one. Or somebody just needs the, the customer or the farmer just needs the white one. It means it's mostly just for you to differentiate that this breed and this one, not to mix them. So that also gave you an idea on this one, they produce how much number of eggs. Or this chick is from a black breed, this breed, not to do. Not doubting. Pick up, pick up. You will put your, your chicken nicely. So, do you treat them? <laughs> like with medicines? Yeah, as I said, the easiest to keep your chicken healthy is to keep your chicken houses clean. But occasionally we give them antibiotics and we deworm them against internal parasites those are the most strict things that we but occasionally you can you can there's programs who can still vaccinate them if we are in the area where it's more prone to diseases but in our case for now we don't really do routine vaccination only maybe during rainy season when i say with corvazo when it's a bit wet and Rainy, yeah, then we try to give them quasi vaccines. I heard you saying that uh, you experience a lot of diseases attacking the chickens. So, my question is that uh, what do you do to those chickens that die from diseases? Well, no, first, if, 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 if you come, like you go to the chicken house like that and you find a sick chicken. The very first thing to do is to separate, to remove from others. Since they are kept inside together and the chicken disease spread very fast. First precaution, you remove from other. 
in case it dies, you contact the veterinary. First, find out what caused the death, what kind of disease was reaching, so that it helps you to go and vaccinate or get vaccination so that you can prevent diseases to others. In case it dies, you don't need to go eat the meat. Try, you might spread the disease today to you. You don't know what disease what is. At least you must burn it. Yes, you must burn. Don't just eat you. What if you end up dying yourself? Why do you still keeping animals then? No, you both. Take care of animals than crops. No, it's, it's, it's just a study. It's just a study. I more do the livestock. When I study, I more study on, 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 on livestock than on crops. Then my interest becomes more on livestock. Not ready to say why. How do you know that the eggs are or not? The, when it comes to, to that, as I said, you keep female chicken. How do you call female chicken? And the male one? Okay, you, you keep the male and the hen and the cock. However, a hen can yes, produce an egg without Hello. a cock. <laughs> I like giving example of a human being. But it's a fact. It's a fact. If I can use the example of a human being, I will say, I will say, when a lady is going to periods, it's because of the egg that breaks to bring that period. Because it was not fertilized. That's why the chicken, the chicken produce the egg, but the chicken doesn't do period things. But if it, but if the, that chicken, if that chicken was not mated or didn't have a cock, it will lay eggs. But that egg it wants to never, ever have a chick. That's why you see most of the eggs that you are buying from shops. Those are not produced from the chicken that will not mated with with the cocks. But if you put a cock it will rise, then during that process in the egg gathering, you think of a chick. Yes, we when it comes to the chicken is there's different age group of growth to give them different types of feed. When they are small, very small from day zero, let me say when you remove them from my incubator, you feed them for a month, around seven, from zero day to seven weeks. You give them a starter mesh. That starter mesh is made specific for small chicks because it has different ingredients that are specific for the chick of that age. When they are growing from seven weeks up to six months, that they are doing the growth period. You give them the grower mesh. Now, after six months, the chicken mature at six months. The chicken start to produce eggs from six months. You give them a layer mesh. That layer mesh is the only ingredient that helps stimulate the chicken to produce a lot of eggs. We have different breeds of uh, chicken, not only this we have, but around the world. And there's some specific are that are breed for eggs production. They will give you that quality eggs for, for, for human consumption or whatsoever.
And when to come to the, the laying, the laying of eggs, <coughs> a chicken, a mature chicken, could take approximately from 24 to 26 hours to lay eggs. Means a chicken can able at least to lay eggs every day after maturity. Every day we expect that chicken to lay eggs from six months up to the lifetime of the chicken, which is mostly around two years. Do we have hens that are in feta that do not reproduce? Yeah, it's very rare to find in a in feta chicken. It's not really common. I never... Of course, sometimes you might not know which one is in feta because you keep them, might be 20 of them, don't have a chance to test them which one is in feta or which one is laying eggs, which one is not laying eggs. It's very, very difficult. Uh, why do, do we need to separate those, those hens that are hatching to those ones that are not? You know, in farming, it's, it's, it's mostly from the interest of the farmer. My interest might be just to produce eggs. I don't need cocks. Of course, it would be a waste of it. As I said, a chicken can lay, a hen can lay eggs without a cock. I, my interest is just to get eggs that I can able to sell. And one thing, an egg of a chicken which was not fertilized, it has a longer lifespan. You can keep it longer than the eggs of the chicken that was fertilized. For instance, if you take a chicken of this that you have cooked, then you keep it for two to three weeks, and you are going to, to break that egg, you might find some blood vessels which is showing that this chicken was fertile and the chick because of the conditions of the temperatures this chick didn't develop to any stage that's why it's just mostly on what your interest do i want to farm to produce chicks or do i want to farm to produce eggs or do i want to farm to produce meat so you used to to feed your chicken by throwing them or you have a machine that can give them food? So far here we do manual, it's not a machine. We just go in the house. You, as you will be going around, you see the chicken houses, there's some red things and some white things. The red one is where we put feed. Call them feeder, the one for water they bring us. You used to remove them so that you can take it. Yeah, sometimes you take the big thing and you go the wheelbarrow and you Put the feet there. Don't use to give them inside here. No, we take them inside there. We but take the feet from the storeroom, lay that in a wheelbarrow. How many chickens do you keep in one chicken house? It depending on the size. On the size of your house. You might build a chicken house bigger than ours. You might have small size. But depending on the size, square meter, less than 20 per square meter, just for control. Not really have a specific number. Shortly and briefly, on uh, I will put it in broad as animal as boundary. So the poultry section of animal as boundary has been done already by my colleague. And uh, I think he even touched a bit on the pig area, I believe. Mm. Or he didn't? He just mentioned it. Okay, and then for me, I'm going to run you a little bit in goats and kettles. <laughs> Number one, we have a lot of different breeds of goats, kettles, and sheep, which I believe you, were, you went through them already in life science and agriculture. Yes. Not yet, yes. Yes. Then, unless they are coming. Now, goats are the early ones that mature. They mature mostly with the six to eight months. Then they are already fully grown. They start giving you small ones. How do we call the small goats? Just like kids, like us here. And then, in a range of 24 months, a goat should give birth three times in two years. So it becomes pregnant 
for the lactating period, which is six months. From the day it conceived to the day it gives birth, it should be six months, then it gives you a small one. And they have multiples, which means they can give you one kid, two kids, or three kids. One goat with two teeth can give you three small ones. Yeah. The same thing. Yes. And then from there we come to the sheep. The sheep, they mature also at around six to eight months. And they can only give you one lamb per year. Because their grace period is longer than the ones for the goats. Then we come now to a kettle. The kettle also gives you one calf in a year. Because their lactating period is nine months. From the day they conceive to the day they calf, it's nine months. And here, we are only breeding with local breeds, which is uh, the goats, the local which we call indigenous goats. Or here specifically, we have Kavango goats and the Kaoko. Those are indigenous. The other word of local is indigenous, which means originally from these areas, not something shipped from somewhere else. Kettles, we only deal with ngunis or sanga, it's the same thing. But the only difference is that ngunis have a bigger frame than the sangas. The sangas are a little shorter, but they are all indigenous also. Those are the only breeds we breed with. And from there we have what we call some diseases, which are notifiable diseases. Notifiable means recognized worldwide. And they are of significant importance to the market of any country. Or recognized diseases in the world, which can attack sometimes sheep, goats, and even cattle. The first one is FMD, in short, which means foot and mouth disease. The other one is called lung sickness, but the scientific name is CBPP. The other one is anthrax, is rabies, most, most, most important ones. So these other ones, they can come in like lumpy skin, disease, and uh, anacrosis and other ones. So those ones, they are even having funny complicated names which you won't understand. But those are the biggest ones. So if FMD today happens here, so which means the whole NCA, northern communal area, starting from Opo up to Zambezi, they will close the markets. They will say all the animals are infected. While they are only here, in the surrounding of Mashari. So without wasting time, I think I was brief and short. Maybe if there is any questions. Yes. When does the goat stop? Okay, that's a very good question. I'm going to answer it in broad. Starting from the goats, sheep, and cattle, the longest one that produces for many years is the female ones. What is a female goat? A do. D O E. A buck. B U C K. A female sheep is a ewe. A male one is a ram. Now on the kettles, I need answers now. Okay, what is the female kettle? It's a cow. <laughs> the male one for breeding is a bull. Now, here is where now the complication comes in. A bull can serve from the year of maturity, which is three years, it can serve for ten years in your crawl. But a cow, or let me say the female animals for the sheep, goat, and the cattle, they can give you active calves in 25 years. I know most of us here have crawls. There are even some cattle that we learned how to milk, especially the boys. <laughs> when we're still very small, up to today we are still milking them. But we are now 18 years old. <laughs> now ask yourself, how old is that kettle? Is it older than you or you are older than it? But he's still giving you a calf, he's still giving you milk.
or the male ones. We don't want inbreeding. That's why we call them very fast. We expect them to service or to mate. Servicing means mating. To mate for at least five years, then you have to get rid of it. Because when it starts mating, it will bring its first offsprings. Then it will mate on its, on its own offsprings, which is its own kids. Then from there, it will get its own grandkids. Then it will mate the own grandkids. <laughs> Starting from their grandmothers up to their grandkids. Still producing. Now from this third year, it will give itself grand-grandkids. For it is calling it, it's my kids. But the mother is a grandkid, now it makes another grand-grandkid. From there, then it's supposed to get out. Because otherwise, the genes are going to shrink and all that, then you will have now very small and slender without meat, dwarf animals. <laughs> we just have long horns, but they are this short. Only the horns which are growing. And we don't want that. Currently, we are following the market. The market wants something that can weigh, something that have a value, which is soft. Or in the agricultural term, we call it tender meat. Not to take an oxen which is 15 years old or 20 years, that's when you are going to sell it. You want to make money. At least you should sell them from the age of three years to five years in that range. Then you can make money because the meat is still sweet and juicy, tender. Buy product that we get from these animals. Number one is the skin, or we call it the height. The skin, from the goats also we have the skin and the hair, which we call mohair. Especially some of the jerseys you see that women like, they are made of those hairs. It's pure animal hair with the skin. They just go and wash it, manufacture it to make it, and they are very expensive. And then from there we get milk. And from milk we have other byproducts under milk. Where we get feta cheese, cheese, and yogurt, and we get rama, cooking oil. You can get it from the milk. Those are the other byproducts under the milk. Then we come now to the real one. The horns also can be used for trophies to go and decorate your house and uh, make some statues. Now the real product that we mostly run to, it's already known. <laughs> what is the, which one? Yes. Now under the meat we also have grades. You have the meat itself and what we call offals. Offals are the intestines, the inside parts, plus the lungs, the heart, those are called offals. And the hoofs. Now if you sell your animal to the abattoir, offals are paid with a different price. And then they take the whole meat, put it also on a scale, they pay you per kilo. Here in the region, we are very lucky, especially Kavango region taking this side, because we have enough grass, we have enough water. But what is the problem that we are not producing best quality animals? It's because we don't want to supplement our animals. Supplementary feeding is very important. We need to vaccinate them to prevent them against diseases. And number two, we have to supplement them. We know like this year is a drought year. So if we don't supplement our animals, we have more than 500 different supplements. We have some which are for early maturity, especially starting from the P6 to P16. But the P12, that one is the best for the bulls. If you are separating your bull from the cows, it will give it time to rest, even for a month or two. Then if you supplement it, that bull, you will turn the name to become professor. Because when it will go and there it's thirsty, it will just be alone there. When you put it in the crawl, it does its work, 100%. When it's mating, it will only take it 24 to 48 hours. It's done. It goes to another lady, to another cow, does its business. It goes to another one. <laughs> oh, he's the boss of the crawl. So, any questions? Time for questions now. What's the maximum number does get of this number of kids? Number of kids? Yes. It depends to how many years are you keeping it. Because a kettle will give you one calf every year. 
if it's taken good care of. That's why we are talking enough supplementation, vaccinations, and then enough water. So if you give it all it needs, so it will give you every year one calf, every year one calf. For a period of 25 years, that's when it will start now having a problem because it's now too old. Get of making money, you don't need to keep them for that period. At least five years, then you get rid of them. It produced for you for five years, but that animal is now eight years old. Or if it's a goat, it's around six years old. Then you have to get rid of it. We used to, to give supplementary feedings to your, to your animals. So how those supplementary feedings assist the animals? Okay, number one, there are some supplementary feedings that are used for early maturity. Number two, there are supplementary feedings that are used for maintenance of the body so that the animal shouldn't lose weight, like this time of the drought. There are some supplementary feedings that are used for reproduction, and there are some that are used for fattening, to make the animal very fat, like if you want to take them to the abattoir quickly, and you get other ones that are used for milk production. Can you give us even two examples? We have what we call dry felt concentrate. That one is for the dry spell to maintain the animal. We have P6 going up, they go up to P14. We have done chemistry and uh, physics. Lamp, EU, REM supplement, which means you can feed the starting from the small ones up to the bigger ones. That one is for mostly small stock, goats and sheep. With livestock, it's very simple. You can identify easily the sick one because they are just like humans. You can know their behaviors very quickly. And once they start producing for you, which means every year you can have at least a return. You don't need to go and look for a job. If you have goats, you have kettles. The kettles, they go and work in your mahangu field. After that, you still have something to put as byproducts to sell or as animals themselves to sell. So you can be a farmer on your own. Not only to say, let me go and look for a job. That's why agriculture is very important. I know 70% of you, the youth here, you have villages. Who doesn't have a village? Who will say that the grandfather doesn't have a village or the mother or the uncle or what? No one. So any questions? If there's no questions, yes. Please say, how many times should a bull mate with a cow to, to, to become pregnant? It depends to how do you take care of your bull. If you don't supplement it, you don't remove it from the female ones, from the cows, for it to rest, it can take it three days to a week. Because if you give it supplements in the crawl, all other kettles will bull that bull and they will also eat there. So it needs a special place for it. And it also needs time to rest. If it doesn't rest, it will be thin, it loses appetite of doing its work. <laughs> It's just like humans, when you are sick, you don't have appetite even for eating. Speak up, speak up, speak up, don't be shy. At what age does a female cow, a female cow start producing? At three years, that is the average. But if you supplement them to, for early maturity, they can mature with two years or two and a half. But normally it's three years. You also have a, a dairy site where you can milk your your cows yes we have a dairy section but currently it's not operational you use a rope <laughs> uh, the dairy cows that we had you didn't need a rope all you do is you supplement them then they know already what is their work but traditionally you need a rope Hey, come, 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 come quickly. 
Come for the quick, then we that's in short, then we go to the little better, where we are going to talk a little bit more. When they were talking about the drink, that it is this is it, where they keep water, eh? That's where they drink for the whole day. When it's empty, or if they are in the playing ground, there's another one outside there. Um, There is another type which we use. We are not giving it right now. You. If we want to put it, which we can direct in water. They keep on eating it to keep on coming up through under here. All right. So this is the record where we keep our chickens. When they die. <laughs> When we bring them in for the first time, we record. If one dies, we keep on recording like that every day according to it it's, it's, it's for one month. At the end of the month, we remove out, we put another one. We record the, the death rate. This is where they lay eggs. This how this is upstairs, you can see. They lay eggs here. They collected most of the eggs, but now they, they started dropping. All right, this is the color of the eggs these chickens produce. The same like the one we buy from the shops. Those cuckoos, the ones which are there, the, the one the, the, with the dots, black and white, they produce white ones, like our, our, our chickens at the village. Yeah. It's, it's old now, but they have to climb here when they are sleeping. They sleep up here. When they, all the pieces drop under, then we we'll open there where you are standing. That, the whole of that area at the bottom, we can open, we take the rack, we pull out the manure. If we need it, we go and use it in the field or in the, in the crops. Or if we don't need it, we dump it somewhere. So it's like that, prevent the diseases. When they are sitting on the ground or cut on the ground, then it will be, it will uh, um, invite the, 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 the diseases. But when it's on top, it's even easy for us to clean and take it away. I think we are done here, but it's more ventilation. For, for the diseases not to accumulate, they, they need fresh air. All right, we are done here. Mm. Okay. Where I'm going to 
tento estar aqui a viver. E o meu belo que é, it's the alarm which goes off when the power drops. This one, it will be like a school, eh? We, 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 the whole night. So you have to come and reset. When the power goes off, it, 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 it rings. So you have to come and drop it here to keep quiet. When the power, or it is like that, when the power is on again, it will ring to give you a sign that that side the power is off. So those trays I was talking about is this one which are here. The machine is able to turn the, 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 these trays to, to, for, for all the eggs to receive the heat. Go ahead, Mr. Schweller. Mr. Schweller, hmm? this thing is still can turn manually. But no, automatic. Yeah, but it's still. Oh, that class not working. So it gets, yeah. You see what happens? So it automatically sometimes turn the eggs itself for, for the heat, for the temperature to be both sides. All the eggs to get the same temperature, eh? Both sides. That's what happens. So that like, what I was trying to say, you see, okay, how many trays you can take? There is one, two, three, four, five, six, eh? Times two. Then it's how many? Twelve. Four times 132. You see how many it can take? A lot, yeah? So when the eggs, when they come in here, they stay for 21 days, like this, to the chickens at home. When it's almost the end of 21 days, those eggs, they need to be dropped and put here. You, you see these trays? Like that, it means they are, they are about to hedge. So they need to be dropped here, and then this tray, it stays, it doesn't rotate. This, this actually, they stay like that. We come and pull out the tray, we put them there, we sort them out, we take them to the room. They will not be fed by the sink here. The container, it, it needs to be filled with see, water to make sure the temperature is see, is normal inside here. It has to be 36. That container, we fetch from the tap, we come and fill it. It must be filled every day with water. You can see the water is down there in that, in that So the water must be missing, but it makes sure the temperature is normal. What's it? 36. Now, because we opened the door, it's now 30. Because now the air, the, 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 the heat is going in. Before they go in the grave, you look at this one, they are all clean. So we have to clean them to make sure that all that pieces of the chickens, they are out. With water? No, we, you, there's other things which you use to clean them. There's other things, either small things which we scrub those pieces out. But with water, it will not be good because they will be rotten. Yeah. They have to stay dry. Yeah. Are we fine? Yes. Make the other group come. In short, what happens here, you see in that house, in most of the house, there's two, two or three, these concrete things, eh? The small one is for water, this long one is where we put the feeds, and then we put a little bit of water for them to, to, to eat them easily. Yeah. So, um... Every time we have to come and clean here, but you know the pigs, they, they defy the, uh, just as soon as you finish cleaning. So we have to put clean water and feed every time. So these ones which are here, they are only there to, for, 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 for mating. But when they are about to give birth, like when the females are pregnant, we remove them to those houses. That's why you see there are a lot of small ones there, plus their mothers to be in, the, in, those, in those houses. There we wash by spraying with the horse pipe. I think in short that is uh, what is happening here. Uh -huh. These pigs, like, uh, I don't know how, how, how the, the lifespan of a pig, but since I came here in 2010, that, 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 that one, 
No, there was another one like that one. I came to find it, it was still, but it was still moving. So once you see the teeth are now, um, you can see the teeth outside the mouth. Like that, they are getting very old. They are getting very old. Yeah, the meat is fine, but it's full of fats now. Uh, it's too much fat. <laughs> <laughs> I know this one. These yeah. ones are not violent. Yeah, no, they are used. We, we they are used to people. We can go in and feed them. We can go in and treat them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> more. Uh, the breed I forgot. Where is that technician? It's gone. Workshop section, eh? Workshop section. That's where we are keeping all our implements here for the one we are using for farming. All the different types which we have, we keep them here. Tractors and whatsoever, all the kinds. So, this one, this section is divided into also two or three sections. Here where we are, we call it DAP section, which is the draft animal power. Have you ever heard that? No. It's all about uh, learning how to do farming with, uh, without depending on the modern way. You understand? You can, where they, they, they make everything about ions and whatsoever, different way of farming. So this gentleman will go DP, the one who used to do all those trainings, he know more about me, uh, about that more than me. So you have to listen to. So, you are already welcomed here, so I will just start explaining or give you a brief about your animal draft power program. For animal draft power program, we see every two components. We see animal draft and the blacksmith. Animal draft power program is where you find the farmers brought here to be trained how to use implement eh, in a in a old way we have a modern way where you are using a tractor and now this one for using animal all of you you know that you need to take two animal yoke them put a plow and they go in the field and they start uh, 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 plowing and you, you, you sow. So is the other company that one is what we are calling animal draft power. <laughs> but when it is the animal draft uh, uh, animal draft power program, <coughs> there we are looking into many different things because we are saying uh, farmers are they going to afford to use a uh, tractor, which we will find it no. Eh? There are few farmers, even in the government, if they buy a lot of tractors and they give, like uh, the way I uh, we are experiencing now in Masharako stress, we have only one tractor, catering all the farmers in the, in the constituency. So the rainy season period is not long. Is very short. So all farmers, if they depend on the tractor, are they going to plow their field? Is where we say it. Can we also not throw out our, mod, uh, our old way of farming? So we supplement the, the tractor with using animal drafting power program. And also, when you look at the affordability of a tractor, there are few people who can afford it to, to have to buy a tractor and maintain it. But if you are having a kettle, there are many farmers who are having kettles. 
but sometimes it doesn't have a, a plow. So it's very easy to get the farmers to get plow rather than the, the what. So also when I was talking the the rain season is shorter. Even if they give five tractors in Masari constituency to plow for the farmers, some of the farmers will not get time to to uh, the tractor to reach the field. The time when they are reaching the field, also the rain is gone. So every year you'll be waiting. So we are talking about uh, poverty uh, uh, reduction. We want to take out poverty. So if we have uh, those problems, those <coughs> common problems like that, we'll not go anywhere. So that's why we are bringing people here to Mashan. So let's continue using our plows and the, and the cattle to plow our field when you, we are still waiting for the tractors. So is the, the many purpose. So when we came here, we didn't focus only to plow. We want, because we are looking to, to say, let's change the concept of the farmers in the easy way to use animal plowing, weeding, eh? and the planting, mm -hmm. so that we can plow and the weed, and uh, plow and the weed and what? The last one. And the plant in a short uh, period, which, which will reduce labor in intensity. So those are the mechanisms which we brought here. So we are teaching farmers here. So that we, farmers, they can use the animal, plow very fast. After plowing, then they can plant and uh, uh, in a short time without uh, too much labor. So those are the other things which we are looking on animal draft powers. So that's why we put a lot of this implement here. Each implement is having its own uh, purpose here. So when I will start explaining, I will explain what is the purpose of, of, of this one and this one. So I put also the other plow at the last side there, which is commonly known at the last there. So that one, I didn't want to put a plow, but I put it because of another component which you are having in animal draft, which you are calling blacksmithing. I'm just going to summarize it, then I will go through. Blacksmithing is the maintenance of the implement, part of implement and the modification of our implement. So you find our government bringing a lot of implement and we come and test them and we recommend to the farmer. This is the other thing. And also the maintenance. So if you see that plow there, we only need from the farmer the beam and the, the, the frog. I don't know if you know it, the frog underneath there. The rest we do it here, we teach the farmers everything from that plow. So that when is this plow, they are broken also in the village. They don't need it to travel long distance, some that it may be Pungu. So the hardware is in Rundu. To travel from Pungu, you need a lot of money to come. But if you are having a blacksmith or a artisan a blacksmith there, who can repair that one? You just take the maybe in two hours you are finishing again you you start <coughs> those are the things which is happening so that that's why i was saying there are two components draft animal power and the blacksmith those they are working in one uh, hand in hand it's clear yes. at my right hand i'll start with this one here it's smaller i will lift it this is a, a planter so a planter, this is also made so that farmers, they, you see when farmers they come here, they complain, ah, this thing so for planting is a headache. So we are trying also to modify uh, some of those things so that we can help our farmers. It's part of Mashak. So this is the planter. So you put a seed inside here. You put a seeds here, inside here. 
then you close it. You see, when you are punching, here it should be, be closed. You hold it like this, you punch, then when you punch, you open it and it closes. Then you go the next step, you are just going straight. So this is a, a, a planter, so it's a hand planter, it's not attached to the animal. You just use this with your two hands. So when you are walking, we are also teaching here so that you will plant in a straight line, so that you can weed. It will be very easy for you to weed. So now when you start you are planting a straight line, so you look, when you are using this one, you look, this is your leg, this is your, your right leg, and the left legs. So when you are standing, it should be on your center, between this one and this one. So even when you are walking, eh, so is how you are making a straight line. Sometimes you don't need it to take a rope and eh, put it there. So you just look there, there is where I'm, I'm going. So you just want to go in. You are just going until, until you go, then you take. If you are two, when you reach this side, you give another one, you go. When you come, you take. So if you use this one, maybe in two hours, you or an hour, maybe you finish even two hectares. But now, that two hectares, if you, you use it manual, <coughs> it will acquire you maybe 10 people. You know how you always plant in the village. You stand eh, in, in a line like this. Eh? Then all of you, you go like this. So it's where you use this one, we will reduce labor intensity. So if you use the manual, you will need more people. Now people, they are sick. Eh? Everywhere, wherever you go, they are sick. <laughs> too many, too many, uh, many diseases. This one is having headache, malaria, and this one, my back, my wife. <laughs> Huh? You can do it alone. You don't need. Others, if it's not sickness, now people they are they like money. Even my my kid. So also, you open here inside. You put the seat. There is a wheel there, which if you want to change the different size of the seat, you can see maize seed. Sometimes the grains are big. Mahangu, they are, they are too small. Mm -hmm. If you leave the, the that wheel for the maize, uh, for, for the maize and put the mahangu, what will happen? Huh? What will happen? The dropping of the seed is too, too many. Instead, because you want maybe uh, three seed dropping. Eh? So if he, that plate is for what, he, for the maize, it takes two seats. Eh? So that space of two seats, eh? now for Mahangu it will take how many? Ten seats. So it will give you a problem when it's a germination. Again, you need to do too much thinning to remove another seed which you don't want so that you can, so that they can grow nice. So, Every time when you are planting, you check what is the one which is here. The wheel which is there is for maize or for, you need to change. So you put it, but this one you pull with the animal. You just pull with that one, this one, a two hectare, maybe you do it only for 30 minutes. You are finished. Or 20 minutes, you are finished. Because it's just going this to the other side, it will come here. Then this 30 minutes, two hectares, you are done. So it's only you and maybe one person who is helping you with the kettle. So in uh, 30 minutes, you are done. You can see there is two things here. This is, we call them the covers. Cover. So when you are planting, it's open mm -hmm. here. It's open, so you put this one down, so that when it's pulling, you just hold here. If there it's planting, 
And uh, this one it will cover the seat. You don't need it to go back again at the clothes, uh, the seat. So it will cover itself. Then you go there. Uh, I heard this one, most you don't know. We call it uh, ground nut lifters. Ground nut lifters. So when you plant the ground nut, so you don't need, when it is ready, eh? when it is ready, you don't need it to go there and what? They put it on an animal, you go through, then it will pull the, the ground nut. So just follow them, you just pick it already out. So it, 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 maybe we can say in the simplest way, is you use it also for harvest ground nuts. But the real name is a ground nut lifters. A, a Rija. Yes, Rija, you always read it in your book for making ridges. So, or if you are making farrows, also you can use it. So, it's very simple. Maybe you will read about it, but now you can see it. this is the things. But also at Masare, also we teach another, uh, another useful way how to use it. Maybe you, you see you make a ridges, uh, the, like um, sweet potato, and the potatoes you also, you, uh, you, you always plant them in the ridges. Eh? Yes. You put, uh, plant them in the ridges. So when it's ready, you want to harvest. So you can still use this one. Go on top of the water, the ridges. Then you open. It's throw the sand this side. Then you, when you are coming, you just follow and you just pick on the sweet potato or potatoes. So you can still use it when the time for, for harvesting. To open up the, the, the soil, digging. It's clear. The power. We are encouraging farmers to plant in what? In a straight line, so that it will be very easy for you to to eat. Which is the animal? Yeah? So when you plant in a straight line, and you are having the spacing yeah, between, so. You should know the spacing between the rolls. Eh? I think you did it. So it depends, it will be maybe 45, other they say 45 from one plant to this, other they even go to 90. Depends which crop which you are planting. It goes up to you. So you make your straight line using this one. So uh, uh, using, maybe you use a reaper, we are going there. Then when you are finishing, instead of you looking at many people to come and weed your field, you take this one and adjust according to the size here. <coughs> so you put your animal, then they will use them for weed. One is also same like this one. The same. The only thing is the difference. This one is very light. Even one donkey, you can use it. <laughs> Very light. This one is heavy. You can only pull with this one with two donkeys or more than two donkeys. So the but the function they do the same. But when we take it for demonstration with farmers, we find most the farmers they like this one because of the lightness. It's very light. Uh, but the only problem for this one, again, where we are finding a problem, we can't find it here in Namibia, we only get in, in Senegal. So we export these things to bring it here, it is very ex expensive when it will reach here. Farmers, we can't afford it to, uh, to, to buy it. It's just only the same, like a standard plow, which you know. The standard plow is same like this, only this one is not painted in like this. But this one is a reaper. A reaper we just call a reaper because from the plow, we just take out this part and put in the reaper. A chisel and this. 
these short wings. Then we call it uh, the reaper. Why are we uh, encouraged to, to use a reaper? I think when you go other side, when they talk more about uh, tillage and the cons uh, conservation, to conserve our field, people they are saying, so disturbance. I think maybe they are teaching you about those things. So disturbance. Now, when, wherever now they are encouraging us that we should disturb too much our what? Our soil. <coughs> this turning around the soil, they want to remove it with new technology because it's damaging our what? Our soil. So if you use a standard plow, you, the first year you come and identify your field like this one here. Yeah? You clean it. You find the first year, the harvest, it will be what? Excellent. The second year, it will not be excellent. It will be better. Eh? The fourth year, eh? uh, you find there is a one, a what, there is one, a there. You are not even happy. The following, ah, uh, I don't even what. Mm, they, even if I will plow there, I will not harvest anything there. It's finished. What is that? What is that? Hand and poverty. Huh? No. It's where we are saying soil disturbance. So we needed to learn the other way, modern way, where we can use our soil without disturb it. When you are turning, when you are using this one, now even in the future, you, in developed countries, they are refusing to use a tractor. Because when you are using a tractor, what is happening? When you are plowing underneath there, huh? you see like on top is a little bit soft. But if you go underneath there, what is happening? Is like a concrete. Huh? So the plant, they want to go and look the water, the food huh? in the soil. So when it's going, growing, there is a concrete. You put a concrete there, and you put here, maybe this a small layer, eh? of whom maybe lose soil. So the plant you want to penetrate the concrete. It will going to penetrate. No. It will not. When you to reach here, it will stuck. It will stuck there. Then even wind, when it's blowing, the whole field, is it? All the, your, your what, your maize is on the ground. Because of what? Deep there, you say concrete. So now is where they are coming, we see, uh, 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 soil conservation. Eh? Tillage and the soil conservation. Where you need the, the correct way how to plow without disturbing your, your soil underneath there. You can use a reaper, because a reaper is just making one straight line. Eh? But when he's ripping here, he's not, you are not disturbing this soil here. Only here, and it's just chiseling. Then you are planting there. Then the following year, if you go through about the soil, uh, this, uh, this reaper system, you rip once. The following year, you don't need, you just still having that kafaro ka of a reaper there. You just plant in the same. Then you you mulch the what? The, the remaining one of the maize on top of that soil so that it creates the moisture content there. So that's why also we are having this reaper here. Also, we are training farmers so that they can change their mind of plowing, disturbing too much the soil so that we can conserve. Otherwise, if we continue with this, old modern ways. In the next five years, the, uh, the yield uh, in our field, it will be becoming smaller, smaller, smaller. But also you can understand uh, at, uh, at the, our grand, grand uh, fathers, you will find they are having how many fields. They will say that it was, it was our field. This was the last one. Is a standard plow. Only there, everything which you see there, we are bringing farmers also to stay here at Mashare for 
for three weeks where they learn to, to make all different uh, parts of the plow here. So with this mantle, you just only get this, the beam and the frog. Then the rest, we just look at the scrapyard and we do this. At the end of the course, we have a plow which is finished so that we can demonstrate. We don't use anything here, we use only fire. Put those things on fire, cut them on fire. So we are teaching them so that, so that they should not complain. Ah, me, I don't have a grinder cut here. Me, I don't have a wire. Me measurement, this one. So when an animal is yoked here, the other one, that side, the, 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 this one is on the middle here. So it protects, when the plant, uh, the plant is here, the other one is here. It controls this yoke. That, that animal it should be walking here. It will not step here. So the plant is here, the other animal is walking there. <coughs> that side. Then it's giving a space here. So when you are turning, it controls. That is the only walk here, not on the what? On the plant. Also, it controls that you should not weed your what? Your plant, it should be in the right row. So there are some calculations there when you are. That's why I was saying it depends whether it's 45 eh, centimeters or 90 centimeters. Rotivators. Yeah. Ripper rotivator. Yes. For seed preparation. For? Seed preparation. Oh, okay. That's how they finish plowing mm -hmm. and they uh, feel the too much bump. Mm -hmm. It's bump. It rotates, spinning out the soil and breaking it to make it soft. Oh, okay. So that when you plant the, easy, the, the plants, the, the, the seed will be very easy to germinate. Mm -hmm. So when you plow, the soil is not having too much bumping, mm -hmm. then you will come with this one hack it in the uh, in the tractor mm -hmm. to go through and just break those uh, soils so that it can uh, be ready for, for planting.